can you tell me why you decided to make a movie about like football or um, and not like basketball? Basketball is popular too, so. Yeah, but not glow. It's not uh, popular all over the world. I think basketball, uh, football uh, generates uh, huge amounts of, of money. And um, in, in fact, it was my co-writer at the time, uh, Thomas, who came uh, to me with the idea. And I thought, huh, should we really make something about that? Because uh, uh, the, the topic was present in the media for years, then by 2010. And I, I was convinced that there must be feature films about uh, the, the sub subject, but we couldn't find any serious uh, gay drama in professional football. And of course, this was one of the reasons it was a challenge to, to be the first to uh, tell a story like that. Uh, but there was also a uh, social political aspect, of course, that was uh, uh, of interest to me. Yes, and the two main actors. I thought I thought it was astonishing that there exists a parallel world where uh, social progress uh, in the, of the last fifty years uh, hasn't happened and. Uh, I wanted to go uh, a little bit more to the bottom uh, of that uh, contradiction. Uh, did you work with a real uh, soccer team? Uh, of course, so this, this, these were soccer players, but it was an, an amateur team, not professional team, because uh, I, could, uh, I could accompany uh, a professional uh, junior team of the club uh, who, who appears in the film, the, the first league club of Bern, who is actually, who won actually two twice the Swiss championship since they supported Mario. <laughs> so that was a good right. omen, I think. And uh, they allowed me to accompany a company, what is yeah. that Accompany uh, the junior team uh, during a week, and they opened also. Uh, the offices, the locker rooms, the, uh, the rooms behind the scene for me, so that I could learn a, bis a little bit of the daily business uh, of football. This was very uh, uh, of value for, for the research for the film. Uh, but they could not give us the team for the film because they were in a championship and uh, they, had, had, they had to do their uh, trainings and they had no time to be available uh, during 10 days for the film because uh, this was they had to be available from morning till evening and uh, and uh, they could not give us a professional team so i had to put together an uh, amateur team with amateur players who play in amateur clubs okay. and and did um, do you know if there is a professional teams that watch the movie yeah i had some feedback uh, 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 inter the most interesting feedback was from a official of the professional football in Germany and he told me that uh, uh, he knows some gay players and they have watched the film and uh, they were very also the response was very positive because they felt recognized in the film and they were happy that it was brought to uh, to public uh, the subject but of course he he, he told me that I shouldn't mention his name because people could uh, make um, make a conclusion to the players he knows. You know, it's all, uh, still it, it, they want to they don't want to be recognized. They were very happy that the film was made, but uh, it did not. Unfortunately, it did not uh, uh, encourage them to maybe come out in in, in the first. Wow. Thing. It's so, but, this, but it this was a very, so very, very nice feedback, and uh, I was very happy about that. It's so weird that after watching the movie and they know that the world is maybe ready, they still afraid to came out. Yeah, because uh, I think it's really a problem of of the of the of the business of the money, because. Uh, if you consider football as a product, it, it's a product uh, which sells uh, all over the world and also in countries where um, 
society is not so uh, 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 where society doesn't accept homosexuals or even or, or react or, or behave uh, hostile towards homosexuals and uh, if, if you see Russia or the Arabian countries where homosexuality is illegal or even uh, prosecuted by law, then uh, I think the, official, uh, the officials are afraid that the market, market value of, of uh, football uh, uh, could be at risk when uh, a top, a very known uh, gay uh, player com comes out. And he would risk, of course, his own market value too, because when you when you look at the career of a, of a typical uh, football player, they are inter interested to rise their market value, and uh, uh, they handle that uh, by changing clubs every two or three years and and rising and rising their value. But a lot of clubs, I'm sure, they wouldn't buy a, a gay player because maybe they're having their teams, mm -hmm. some players from countries like Russia or Arabian countries or from the Balkan. And uh, they, they, of course, they are afraid to bring tension into the team. And for a football team, uh, uh, the most important thing is this team spirit that they play together. They, uh, and, and so everyone is afraid uh, of, of a coming out of a player. Oh, it's, yes, I never thought about that. About that. Yes. I, I think the eco economic aspect is the mo most important. Wow. It's so much money if you see the amounts when they, when they sell top players, 250 millions or things like that. And I think the, the, the bigger uh, the turnarounds are, uh, the more conservative is the image that, uh, that is provided to the to the outside if you compare with hollywood it's a little bit the same thing yeah? hollywood makes so much money and uh, a gay actor is always afraid oh they won't believe uh, me in heterosexual uh, love uh, stories if 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 audience know that i'm gay so it's, it's but, about but it's changing about in hollywood now you have some big names that are out and they are still getting you know yeah, because they catch them in toilets or something like that. <laughs> but if they if they do it, yeah, it's. But you're right. It's change. It's changes. A in little. Hollywood, it's, all, it's, you have Matt Bomer that playing straight people, and you have Luke Evans mm -hmm. that playing straight people, and, and they, they are still, you know, big names. And and of course, it changes because of Netflix, because Netflix is very uh, engaged in 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 bringing to public uh, trans people, gay people. And uh, this has, I think this has an impact of our attitudes of, of viewing things. Yeah, it's, I think it's very important. Yeah. Yes, yeah. N Netflix is really changing the, the scene for LGBT. You look just like now in, in a Star Trek, you have uh, transgender, you have non-binary, you have gay. Like Star Trek, it's the most mainstream, uh, you know, uh, TV show in the world, and they presenting all the LGBTQ. Yeah, but it's it's all it's even with Netflix, it's about the money because they have uh, the marketplace Wild World, you know, they have uh, the big marketplace, and when you put all together all the gay people who who have a uh, uh, who. who uh, watching uh, Netflix, then of course there uh, comes a lot of money in. But for example, in a little uh, country like Switzerland, when you want to bring a film with a gay topic uh, to the movie theaters, then producers and distributors, they're hesitating because normally uh, they say gay, uh, film with, with gay subjects don't sell. Yeah, because the market is too little. Even when you go to with a German spoken film to Austria and to Germany, the market is too little. But Netflix has the has the whole marketplace, the, the global marketplace. So it counts. What was the response? I know Mario won a w award in the Swiss Academy, you know, like the, the Swiss yeah. Oscar. But but what was the response of the audience? Yeah, that, that was uh, very positive because people who don't like or homophobic people will, won't come to me and say, why did you do this film? It's a shame. Uh, I read some of these uh, comments in, in Facebook, of course, uh, but uh, 
only a few. The most of the response was very positive, and the the most uh, intense uh, response was, "Please, uh, we want to have a second part with a happy end." <laughs> <laughs> I heard the, the hundreds of times <laughs> and then I was a little bit sad because people didn't understand why I chose this uh, this end because with the happy end I think the film would be a nice love story but with a, uh, a less happier end uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's more critical because I, I, my goal was that people go uh, uh, begin to uh, ask questions about uh, after seeing the movies why the situa situation is as it is and uh, what, what we could change. But when, when the story uh, ends well, then every, everyone is satisfied and uh, the social political aspects goes to the background. So that's yeah. why I choose the, not a happy end. And um, I was to work with these two talented actors, um, uh, Max uh, Ubacher. Ubach and uh, Aaron uh, Altras. Altras. That, uh, that now is uh, in Netflix, in the Unorthodox. Yes, in Ar Unorthodox, yes. <laughs> I'm very happy for him. Both of them um, are making a career now. Uh, Max has, uh, has played in several uh, movies uh, since he played in Mario. Uh, Max was always my first choice, I have to say. Um, I, I thought his appearance is perfect for for the for the role, and uh, when I learned when I when I did the casting 2016, when I learned that he played football in a club as a teenager, then uh, my choice was made. And uh, for Aaron, I had to find someone in Germany because, uh, as you have seen in the film, the the dialect, uh, the Swiss uh, German yeah. dialect, and and the high German. Uh, uh, plays a certain role in the film, so I had to find a German and uh, we found him. I didn't know him before we found him uh, with a uh, casting agency in Berlin and when they did the first test together I thought it was the perfect match uh, for the film because uh, they are different uh, different in their appearance, uh, are on the black haired guy and more athletic guy but more sensible. I liked the, the idea that the more the more uh, athletic guy is the more sensible of, 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 of the two. And have you kept them, have you created with them the intimacy because they have very strong connection in the movie. You know, a lot of times in, in a relationship dramas or romantic dramas, you feel that the actors are not really connect and this is could ruin all the movie. But over okay. here, you really believe them. Yeah. And this, I think this is one of the um, the reason the movie was so popular because mm -hmm. you really believe they are in love and they have this strong connection. So have you worked with the actors to create it? Of course, I I, uh, I, I always make rehearsals before a movie, and they of course uh, when when they met the first time, uh, I asked them on on my sofa in my <laughs> living room. So begin, please begin to make out a little bit. Uh, because it's very important because young actors would would tell you uh, yeah of course I'm ready to play a gay role but uh, when it comes to touch a man then you can see if if they're uh, if they're hesitating or not and uh, there it was no problem for both of them I think uh, for young modern actors is a challenge to play a gay role even if, if they are heterosexuals they were more afraid more afraid of the football scenes to hit to hit the goal that was the, the, the big, the big uh, fear of both. They, they wasn't so, so afraid of the, of the love scenes. Nice. And, um, okay. And your previous movie we showed as well in Steel Vipers, Rosie. And okay. it's, yes. <laughs> and it's very, very different movie. It's very personal. It's very, it's pure relationship, son, mother, and, and another guy. And it's, it's very delicate. And in Mario, it's much large, large scape, you know, and there is, and it's much more, the story is much more um, provocative or sens sensational. And, and I want to ask, are you, but in the, but in the same time, you succeed to keep the, the intimacy 
of the movie, mm-hmm. although it's like, like very much, much loud scale film. Mm-hmm. How, how you worked it? It's, it's already in the script, of course, so, but how you balanced it? How you don't lose the intimacy? Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, I'm not a gr- big fan of this uh, uh, Thema film, theme movies, you know, and Mario has a big theme homosexuality in professional football. And I was a little bit afraid of it to, that it could become too didactic. didactic. Yes. To, uh, you understand what I mean? Yes, yes. And, We're using it and, too. <laughs> so, so I think uh, uh, the, the challenge is to go deep in the reality of this world. So the, that's why I made the research. I wanted to show the locker room as rea- uh, realistic as the relationship of the of the both and I think with the relationship uh, between people the intimacy I have no problem I always get it I, I don't know I cannot tell you how it's it has to do something with uh, confidence between me and the, the actors they they have confidence when 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 we do so scenes but it's also important to 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 Uh, uh develop a realistic picture of the rest of the surrounding where the where the story plays and i think these things together make the intimacy and you of course you are right rosie was a more uh, a very personal film because uh, rosie was uh, parts of it autobiographical uh, 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 most of all uh, the, the image of, of rosie the, that was really a portrait of my own mother The rest was a little bit invented. Uh, the love story in the village, I never had, <laughs> had one, <laughs> but I would have I would have liked to have one. <laughs> but this was a little bit my fantasy. And uh, yeah, this was really more personal. I even shot that film in, in, the, in the little village where I was uh, raised and, and where I lived for, for uh, 18 years. So uh, yeah, Mario was another, another uh, challenge. And yeah, and um, yeah, this is already we already talked. like I and now I see that we already talked about uh, like um, if football uh, if you know about um, football players that watch the movie, and it's one of my questions over here. Um, <laughs> what was most technically challenge? Uh, the whole football thing because I'm not so interested in football I I watch uh, all the uh, big competitions uh, world championship or even European championship I know how the how the game works but uh, the challenge was to put it on screen in a in a way that you believe that, uh, that you uh, see a real a real game and that's very complicated because it's nothing spectacular you see it every day in a television but to to uh, uh, um, uh, to, con- to, ma- to make that for for a movie it's very complicated because you have to shoot with luck with amateurs as I told you and of course with all the little games in in Switzerland we we had a lot uh, a lot of close-ups that when when you do a, a wide shot you would see oh they're really not professional uh, mm-hmm. My actors were the best, I think, <laughs> but the rest of the team, so la la. But in, in Hamburg, we had, we had better players and we could make uh, the white shots. But of course, we, we shot in an empty sta- stadium and we had to put the audience uh, in the post, pro- we had the, ad- the uh, audience in the post production with CGI. And the technique nowadays is so perfect that you hardly uh, uh, can see that it's in fact. Uh, Uh, yeah, uh, wow. special, special effect. So we, 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 we filmed the audience in the real game and then we put together the uh, reactions to the, to the fictive game uh, with the audience from the real game and put it in. Of course, this was really, really uh, expensive. Maybe we should have had a, a little uh, uh, UFO or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that you can see. <laughs> <laughs> the, the special effects because what you what you see at the end is a is a football play it's not yeah. very spectacular but it's very complicated to make and, and one thing that I had in my head it, you shouldn't change the habits of of seeing a, a play it's always one side the cameras are on one side at at the, at the board of the, of the field 
it's not in the field. And uh, I watched other football movies and they are always making the mistake. They go into the field behind the ball and then you think, oh, this is, this is cinema. It's not a, a real football game. And so uh, uh, I, uh, with this analysis, I told the camera people to, to stay on one side only and not to go into the field of, uh, into the, field of, the, of the game. Yes. And what was the most emotional scene for you to direct in the movie? <laughs> yeah, when, well, of course, when uh, Aaron leaves uh, uh, Max in, in Switzerland, also uh, Leon leaves Mario, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and this was very emotional for, for everybody because they couldn't, uh, they, they really were crying, yeah? Because they were wow. so, so in that love story, both of them. And I, I did it three or four times. And Aaron went outside always, and the, the team was outside the catering people and other, other people from the team. And they thought I'm really hurting him because <laughs> every time when he came outside, he was, full of tears are on two not only, <laughs> not only uh, Max inside and this was uh, for was very emotional wow um, yeah when, when I you know when I saw the first time Mario I was sure it's going to be you know in all cinemas all over the world big companies and then disappointed when only um uh, you know more lgbt oriented distribution took it in mm. israel of course it went direct to the movie channels no cinema israel mm. is very conservative with what they are showing in the movies yeah. in the cinema and i said why such you know uh, mario it's very mainstream commercial movie Mm. Why you don't get, you know, like any other uh, movie, the chance to be in, uh, in cinemas all over the world and not only, uh, not only LGBT oriented distribution companies or direct to TVs. I was, I was trying to ask uh, distribution in Israel why they didn't uh, took Mario and they said it's it's not uh, for his very audience and it was very successful in the festival so I was I was surprised from their reaction I was not so surprised to be honest because as I as I told you in in the movie theaters gay gay film also films with a gay subject even if they have a more universal uh, universal message, uh, it's they, they are not so su successful. Uh, one of the most successful was Broken Mountain, but not so successful as I thought, uh, because we 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 compared a little bit the uh, box office before we shot the film, and I was not so surprised. Uh, the, the majority of people they won't go in a film and uh, take a gay love story as a universal universal love story. We gay people we go to see heterosexual love stories and and accept the universality of 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 loving of of of, of uh, intimacy. But the contrary is seems to be very very uh, hard to to bring people into a cinema for a gay love story. For example, there is one ex uh, one other exception. At the same time, or a little bit later, the Italian Italian movie uh, came into the theater. Uh, Call me by your name. It was yes. quite successful, but uh, don't forget, it was co-produced by um, uh, Hollywood, and they have a huge lobby for promotion. And uh, uh, th that's the fact uh, nowadays. You need. Uh, a huge promotion even for not uh, LGBT films to to uh, wake the interest of, of people. You have to be uh, present uh, for days everywhere and then maybe people go to, to see a movie because the, so much movies is uh, are released uh, nowadays. It's, yes. uh, yeah. yeah, call me by name I can tell you in Israel. It was a huge flop in the cinema. 
Ah, it was a huge flop. Oh. Yeah, no one came. And then we showed it, we did a premiere in Israel, and then we showed it in our monthly event. Mm -hmm. And in the free screening we did in the monthly event, we had more audience than all the two and a <laughs> half weeks spread in the cinema. So, yeah, in, in, in my country, in, unfortunately in Israel, the, even... Even the LGBT audience will not go to see the the gay movies in the cinema. They will wait to see it all them or in the monthly event or in yeah, TV. And of course, a lot of gay uh, people are afraid when they go to the movie. Everyone knows. Maybe Mario is more successful uh, in streaming. You know, it, it was sold in so many streaming uh, uh, platforms, and maybe there it, it's more successful because people can can watch it at, uh, at home and they don't they don't have to come out <laughs> by going to the to the movie theater so yeah maybe because of that uh, lgbt film festival are still relevant that movies like mario could be shown you know on the big screen and not only in streaming yeah yeah, yeah it's a pity it's a pity that it doesn't work so okay can you tell us what is your next project or is it a secret? It's a secret. It's a gay love story. <laughs> 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 but a historical one. In fact, it's a secret, but it's out because I, I, I already have a little bit of funds for, for writing. Nice. Uh, James Baldwin, do, is it uh, known for you? James Baldwin, yeah. the writer? The writer, the, Af the Afro-American, yes. Yes. And... Uh, in the beginning of the 50s, he was three three times in Switzerland in a little uh, village in the mountains, Loesch les Bains, because he had a lover, uh, a, a Swiss boy. And uh, uh, this Swiss boy had a chalet, his, par his parents had a chalet, and Baldwin came to recover because he was not in a uh, in, in, with a good health at the time in Paris. He lived in Paris and they came uh, to Loesch les Bains and there he finished his first novel. Go tell it on the mountain. So I, this film treats only the two years of the visit of, of uh, James Baldwin and Lucia Hoppersberger in in Loesch les Bains and the reaction of these uh, uh, people from the village who have never seen a black man. So it was uh, some kind of innocent racism. You know, they wanted to touch. They wanted to, they wanted uh, to touch the hair, the skin, and for him it was. He saw the difference be be between uh, a bloody and and aggressive racism in America and what these people to, uh, uh, did with him, uh, how they behaved. And he wrote an essay about that stranger in a village. It's a little. Is save 30 pages and uh, we have some information of course for the film from this essay and made a, a big research about this time. Wow, it's an amazing story. Yeah, it could be fine. The problem is there is another director in Switzerland who is writing the same uh, story and it's a little bit of competition. I have to be uh, quicker, Fast. <laughs> faster, yeah. Faster, okay, yeah. be faster. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> um, so, you know, we've been in a few months, we are under lockdown. Um, yeah. Everything is closed. Did you got addicted to any TV show? Did you watch any movie that you think everyone should watch during this lockdown? And Oh, uh, I'm watching shows uh, uh, low beneath my niveau, you know. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I I watched uh, the fourth uh, the fourth how do you say the fourth season of The Crown. It came oh. out yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I never was a, I never was a fan of Diana, but uh, I think the actors are so so uh, fantastic, and uh, I enjoy to to see them play. Olivia Olman, uh, Elena Carter, uh, it's amazing. Gillian Anderson as Margaret Thatcher. Yeah. yeah what yeah. happened to her? She's yeah. she, she amazing. Very, very strange, but it's a pleasure to, to see them play. Yeah, it's it's expensive, uh, fancy soap opera. Yeah. It look amazing. Like, yeah. yeah. I like yeah. 
all the shows on Netflix, they have so much money. The, did you watch the Gambit, Gambit Queen? The... Yeah, I've seen it, yeah. yeah. It's very nice, yeah. So, um, uh, someone from the audience have a question? Gar, do you have a question? Yes, actually. Uh, for, but first, uh, I really love the movie and how it uh, uh, took this very complex subject. Uh, my question is, you talked about how there is a lot of uh, inertia, I'm trying to rephrase a little bit, uh, inertia with uh, major leagues, with a lot of money involved. And uh, do you see, do you hear the movie or uh, other like it do make a difference, even small one that maybe will, will add up? Yeah, I I hope it's only a hope, but in general, you know, nowadays the the clubs in in Western countries they uh, claim to be open-minded and and uh, liberal uh, concerning diversity, and uh, because it's uncool to to be not gay friendly nowadays, and uh, it's important for their image. But when you see inside the clubs uh, there you often not not always not with the two clubs uh, uh, that, that supported our film but uh, you often can find a lack of awareness a lack of uh, interest and, and willingness to really change something and uh, I think that's also with the associations you know with the FIFA with the FB in Germany they sign papers uh, they uh, say that they want they will support any coming out but they're not really interesting because of of the business uh, and that's a, a real problem it's a uh, how do we say Lippenbeckanis you say something but you don't really mean it it's pink it's a little bit pink washing what what they do no? they, ha they have to do it for their images but uh, as far nothing changed no nobody come came out my, my only uh, uh, idea is uh, there should be a group coming out. All the gay players should come together and to make the big coming out of 10 or 15 players and then, then uh, see what happens. Do you see something like that happening in the not so far future? Now I heard from uh, some, uh, I heard from some uh, uh, tries, but uh, at the end, uh, it, it, it didn't happen. Uh, a lot of clubs are, are, are working together with uh, some uh, with, with LGBT groups, or a lot of clubs also have their specialists, their psych psychotherapists who are special specialized for, for gay player and uh, to support them to, to bear this double double life um, but uh, as as far as you have all as you have still agencies which uh, provide girlfriends to the players even to to heterosexual uh, players who are single but they provide them girlfriends uh, to uh, suppress rumors you know as far as these agencies uh, exist so I'm a little bit pessimist that, that things Thank you. will change quickly. Thank you. Mar Marcel, I want to thank you very much for this uh, conversation. And I thank you for, and, and for showing the film and twice <laughs> even. Yeah, even uh, I'm happy we had this uh, Swiss focus yeah. uh, this year and showing some uh, movies from uh, Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, I hope uh, we will meet uh, one day in Tel Aviv in, in the physical film festival. Oh, I would like to come. <laughs> I've never been in Tel Aviv. I really would so, like to. Yeah, let's, let's aim there. Uh, okay. <laughs> after, after the COVID. <laughs> and after my next film. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm already very curious to watch it and uh, we'll follow it. Okay, and, thank you. And thank, thank you, you, thank you very, very much. We'll see. Thank, thank you, you too. Bye bye. Bye Have bye. A nice evening. <laughs>